Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to step through a quick tutorial. I want to show you there's three ways you can install Home Assistant on your single board computers. Three ways that are supported. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but it's really easy to get into areas that are unsupported and you want to stay away from that, especially when you're talking about the core of your home automation, right? Let's start out with a supported method. So the three ways I want to talk about, there's if you're using a Raspberry Pi, we can use the Home Assistant OS, which is really the best way to have a turnkey solution where the OS itself is patched and managed and you have supervised mode. So all of your containers and such run and are orchestrated by the Home Assistant OS. Uh, and you just have that all baked into one system that is nice and tidy, fully supported, and it's the least friction to, to your endpoint there. Second option I like is the supervised option, which if you wanna run on a different single board computer, like I like the Rock 4s, you know I love those, right? That's another ARM-based SBC, but you can run native Debian on the OS. It has to be native Debian. It cannot be Ubuntu. It cannot be any other flavor. It must be Debian. Then you can load up and run supervised and still get all of the features you get except for the managed OS component. Let's take a quick look at that. You can get there, just go to the Home Assistant website, click on getting started, scroll down a little bit here to this matrix right here. Now there's one extra option in here that I'm, I'm not gonna get into, uh, and that's this core version here, the third column. Uh, I'm not gonna step into that one. I don't think that's a really good use case for most people. So we're gonna start with HAOS, this first column. So that's gonna be a Raspberry Pi 4 or another board, but I like the Raspberry Pis. On the fourth column, I'm going in the order of my personal preference, uh, would be supervised, okay? So this is gonna give you almost all the same features. The only difference is you have to manage the OS updates and stuff yourself, which is all fine and well, and takes a little bit more setup, but gets you primarily the same operating mode. And then the third option, as far as my preference, but it's the column number two from the Home Assistant website, would be the containerized option here. So this is where you're just running the core Home Assistant in your existing Docker deployment. So this is going to require probably the most out of you as the operator and your own containerized environment. That's a really good option to explore if you have particular use cases. The big caveat is it's only Home Assistant, just the core version of Home Assistant. So what we know as add-ons, and if you're not super familiar with Home Assistant yet, I definitely recommend you check out some of the terminology uh, right, right here on the website. Add-ons and integrations, very different things. They sound similar, they're not. Under the hood, add-ons effectively are additional containers, okay? So since you're running this just as its own container, it's not managing other containers. You have to manage those. All very doable, but there's caveats to that. So one of the nice things about running in supervised mode, the kind of two different variations of that, is you can access add-ons straight through Home Assistant. It effectively proxies or integrates it tightly into that front end. Whereas if you're running containerized version, nothing is plugged into the user interface, so you have to present those separately. So that adds a lot of additional challenges, but there's use cases for that. And we'll set them up and I'll be happy to explore those with you. So uh, again, my preference, Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 5, that gives you Home Assistant OS, off and running really quick. Secondarily would be pure Debian on a different single board computer uh, that is not directly compatible with Home Assistant OS or HAOS, and that gives you almost the same experience. So as we go through this, uh, this is gonna be a three-part video because I, I don't wanna do a 45-minute video here. Uh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not fun for anybody. We're gonna break this up into the three separate parts for the Raspberry Pi one, the Debian, which is gonna be the supervised one, and then we'll do the containerized version as a third video. And just to sort of represent that here, I've got my Raspberry Pi 4 here that we're gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna use this middle one here. This is a Rock 4, which is another ARM-based SBC. Looks very similar, but it's a lot more powerful than a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and then I have, an, I have an additional Rock 4 here, which we'll do this to kind of represent the containerized version. So let's start today right here, Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, this is the simplest. So back to the Home Assistant website, this is really simple. So there's two ways you can approach flashing your SD card here. If you know you're just gonna go Raspberry Pi, you're not gonna dabble with any of the other ones, easiest thing to do is 
to use the flashing tool that is for Raspberry Pi. If we navigate to the Raspberry Pi section, you can read all about this and what SD cards are recommended, and et cetera, et cetera. But there's a very specific tool uh, that you can download from the raspberrypi.com website, and this is the flasher. What's nice about this is uh, it'll let you download the images that you're gonna flash to your Raspberry Pi uh, straight through that user interface, rather than have to uh, you know, use something like Etcher. Belina Etcher is one of my favorite tools for flashing image files. Uh, you can just use this tool to grab the image and flash it. So this will step you through it. It's really easy. They even give you nice little uh, animated GIFs here to, to select the right uh, image and grab it and flash it to your, your disk here. Once you've completed that, you're just going to go ahead and insert that in your Raspberry Pi. You'll just pop that guy in and turn it on. There we go. Okay. And with that powered up, let's take a peek here. We can see and we are off and running, perfect. So once it boots, we'll see it here in the background. It's just loading up the supervisor and some of its background tasks, getting some of those baseline containers up and running. Take a close look here, just right there. So that's where you're gonna look for your IP address. If we bring this up in the browser, we'll see uh, if we attach to that, it's, it's always gonna end in that port 8123. That's the home assistant port number. So. You'll see this sitting, it'll, it'll warn you here, it may take up to 20 minutes. It's getting all these containers and things again started in the background to finally get you ready for uh, Home Assistant. This is that one-time startup. Subsequent startups will be kind of normal time. It won't take this long. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, show details. Why not? Let's see what's there. So this will give us a little bit more of a rundown on what's actually happening inside. Uh, if, if you're so interested. Otherwise, hey, go get yourself some coffee and uh, it'll be up and running in a few more minutes here. Also a great time, if you're not familiar with Home Assistant, go uh, check out the uh, community, check out their vision, get yourself the local apps downloaded to your mobile devices and tablets and computers and get ready to start consuming uh, Home Assistant. Also worth pointing out, kind of while you're waiting for this to finish up, this is a good time to test to see if MDNS is working properly on your, your network. That's a broadcast technology, makes devices able to find each other much easier. So you'll notice down here, see where it says Home Assistant URL, and that's homeassistant.local, and then the port number. You should be able to ping that and get a reply that matches the IP address listed just above that. That'll tell you that MDNS broadcast is working properly on your local network. That's gonna come in later in this series when we start talking about IoT devices that really rely on that to check in and register and identify themselves on your network. All right, and we're done. Once it's all done, it's gonna drop you off right here. If you're coming from an existing version of Home Assistant, you can take a backup from that and you can import that here and pick up right where you left off, which is amazing. Either switching between devices or failed piece of hardware or something like that. Restore it, boom, you're back in business. It's fantastic. If you're starting from scratch, you're just gonna hit create my smart home. Boom, you're off to the races here. You're gonna to wanna to give it your location. That's gonna give you the correct time zone, correct currency, units of measurement, and also very importantly, correct sunrise and sunset location. So if you're gonna be basing any automations based off sunrise and sunset, yes, you will. Uh, make sure you get this right. And then you've got a few options here for data that you share up to the Home Assistant developers. So they're off by default, but you can read each of these and decide if you would like to share some of that information to help with future development. Right off the bat, it's gonna find a few things out there on your network. So uh, just happens to be my network. I take a quick look at this and say, yep, those are things that are on my network. So you can proceed through here. And once you finish off, it's gonna drop you off at your kind of base dashboard. So we'll get into kind of like baseline setup at a later date. This is really just to get you to this point. And please do click around here, play, see what you can discover on your own and start exploring Home Assistant a bit. Another thing I'd like to point out, you'll see here I'm running this Raspberry Pi without a heatsink. Please don't do that. Please do not run any computer like this without a heatsink. They ship without them, you can run them. It's easy to forget about it. Now what's gonna happen on the Raspberry Pis is they will over time start to get a little hot. They do have good thermal protection, so they will throttle themselves back uh, at a cost of performance. So why do that to yourself? I've got a link down in the description to a great passive heat sink that works really well on these. And I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but the other device that we're gonna step into for our second one, this is one of the Rock 4 devices. What I love about these 
is the engineers made the decision to put the CPU on the bottom, which means this massive heatsink module uh, works perfectly. This is passive. If you've seen any of my other videos around the rock arm project, I was able to take advantage of this positioning to do some really creative and efficient airflow cooling across these for multiple rock fours in one configuration. Our next video is gonna be the supervised install on pure Debian Linux on the Rock 4, a little more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. It's going to be more of a bring your own skill set for Linux. So if you're comfortable in Debian managing that operating system, this is going to give you much the same experience in Home Assistant as Home Assistant OS. So a little bit of management on your hands, but still almost all of the same functionality as you get out of the core Home Assistant OS deployment. So we're going to step into that one next time. Thanks again for watching today. Hope this was helpful for you. Please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you see the next one coming in. I'm going to do that one for the Debian one really soon here. So love for you to join me on that. Please share your comments below and thanks again for joining me.